All right, welcome back to the Super Coach Nuff channel. In this video, we're going to look at the round 17 preview uh, for the 2023 NRL Super Coach season. Uh, and so, I guess uh, recording this is Thursday morning after Origin. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be at the uh, the stadium last night. Uh, and as a Queenslander, it couldn't have gone any better. You know, it was uh, just a a great game. Like their defence was unreal, and then obviously, you know, scoring 32 points and uh, winning the series after two games is a uh, you know pretty cool. Um, and especially, I guess, being the first time I'd gone to Origin, I'd always thought, oh, you know, it's there's a lot of it's a lot of crowd and and all that, but uh, it was pretty spectacular. Uh, maybe that's just because they won by so much, but uh, yeah, it was great fun. Um, but I guess in terms of our uh, super coach sides, the big news uh, with that, Tom Travojevic unfortunately has done a pec injury, so uh, chance he might not come back this year. So I guess an obvious uh, trade out target. So I think if we look at the current stats as they stand for traded outs and ins, so you've got Dream Buller at the top of the list. Um, so I think. You know, I talked about people who had him and Turbo. You'd almost lean towards him. He's done his job of making us a lot of money. Um, but, you know, we can switch to another the keeper type option. But I think now if you've got Turbo and him, you know, the obvious trade now is to go with Turbo. Um, if you've got him and someone else, I can't imagine, you know... Who else you would have that, uh, you know, you'd have Buller on the, like you'd trade Buller out because they're both not playing. Um, you know, Will Kennedy from the Sharks, I'd, I'd prefer Buller to him. Um, Matt Luttrell, you know, is still injured, so you can, you know, trade him out and wait for him to get back to fitness. Um yeah, just racking my brain there, the other two. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think, you know, that probably number will drop uh, now after the, the Tom Travojevic sort of injury. Uh, and you can see there, he's number three. He will definitely, uh, you know, rise up in that the trade-out ranks as we get closer to, to uh, Friday night. Zach Hosking at number two. So didn't re I didn't even realise he wasn't named for the... the um, Panthers, so it must be Sorensen and, and Martin in the second row there. So, yes, absolutely, you know, if you've still got him, you you can uh, get out of the pick. You, you know, he had that good run a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago now. But, uh, yeah, you can definitely get off. Uh, Josh Schuster, so if you've got the luxury of uh, having, you know, more than 17 available this week, I think you know that's a that's a nice luxury trade to be able to make is to get out of uh, Josh Schuster. Uh, fortunately, I'm not in that boat, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know I think that's a that's a nice trade out if you uh, you know w would like to do so. Nathan Cleary, so yeah, a lot of people will be making the move from him to Sean Johnson this week, I think, uh, and I will be one of said people. Um, yeah, you know. He will be back in a few weeks, and so you might say, well, why don't we just hold? But you're going to miss out on those points from Sean Johnson over the next few weeks. So, um, yeah, I definitely recommend bringing Cleary in. Billy Smith. So I guess there's quite a few nice uh, cheap options in the center wing this week. So if Billy Smith is your ticket to one of them, um, you know, I can fully endorse that move. Uh, Harry Edwards. So I guess another one, you know, is is on the buy. Um, so, and you know, he'll provide a bit of good cover in round 19. Particularly, you know, a lot of teams have got Payne Haas, Tino Falmasula Ali. I can't even say it. Don't know why I thought I could say it this morning. I can barely say it at the best of times. <laughs> Uh, but they're yeah, big Tino, you know, Ruben Codra even. These guys that won't be available in round 19. So he will provide nice cover. I guess also with um, with Fainu missing out on the, the Manly squad um, and wouldn't be eligible for round 19 anyway. Someone like Carrie Edwards is a useful hold, but, you know, if he is your ticket to get 
getting a 17th player on field, or if you can't upgrade to one of those guns, then, uh, you know, that's understandable. Uh, Paul Alamotti, so I guess, you know, I've kept the faith with him all year, and then, you know, I am at the stage now where I have lost a bit of, a bit of, of the faith. Uh, again, you know, we've got a few nice center wing downgrade options. So I think Alamotti, even though he will cover the next few rounds after this week's buy, uh, he's a good trade-out target, particularly if you're short on numbers this week. Jacob Preston, so I can see the appeal, you know, he's got 600,000k on him. You can use that to, to bring in a, a gun in the position. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't think he's that far off a gun, to be honest, as, as sort of much as the Bulldogs are struggling at the moment. Um, I would try everything to hold him. You know, I'd, I'd trade Alamotti first. I'd trade Edwards first. I'd even think about trading Buller first before I traded out Preston. You know, that's just, uh, you know, how good he looks. Uh, and then Tyrant Peach at number 10. So I guess another obvious one. He's done his job for us, played through round 16, but Isaac Tago is back. Um, and, you know, unless there's an injury in the back line again at the the Panthers, uh, Peachy will be on the uh, sidelines until then. So you can see he's made 200k, which is a really nice pickup uh, for your team. So I use that money to, you know, you might even be able to get him up to a keeper from that price. So in terms of trade-ins, Sean Johnson at number one. So we've talked about the Cleary to Johnson trade. And I think, you know, that, that is absolutely the, the, the best trade this week uh, if you're in that position. Oh, excuse me there. Uh, Clint Gutherson is at number two. So I guess, you know, a lot of people looking at his performances recently and, and you know, you've got the likes of Turbo and Buller you need to trade out. Um, and, you know, I guess you're not getting those scores he bought in, but the fact that he's he's got a few, you know, his buy coverage is really nice in the coming weeks. Um, yeah, you know, you can understand people bringing him in. I think uh, maybe personal bias is the only thing preventing me from seriously considering him. So, uh, yeah, if you want to bring him in, I think that's not the worst trade in the world. It might even be the way I end up going this week. Um, cause, yeah, I haven't fully committed to the, the, the third trade yet. <laughs> uh, Cam Munster. Yeah. So people bringing him in. Uh, I'm not trying to work out who he would be in for. Obviously, he's a gun, and you could bring him in whenever you want. But uh, I'd be more inclined to just hang out until after um, after round 19. And then, uh, you know, you get him for the run home. But I guess in saying that, that's the last buy the Storm have is round 19. So whether he plays Origin or not, you get the exact same coverage. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to bring him in, it's a perfectly good trade. Uh, Kaloa Matangi, yep, I think as, you know, a real super pod type option. Um, so it says 3.9% here, but that's just of the trades, not the whole, um, playing population. So I think he is still a really good pod option and one that, uh, yeah, I'd like to, to seriously consider as well. Um, uh, probably doesn't have the best buy coverage in terms, he doesn't play around 20, but, you know, I think... Uh, you get me through the next three weeks and by that time I'll be sort of back in and focused and probably should be able to cover around 20 anyway just at a, a quick glance at my side so um, yeah great great trading I think to uh, bring him in Reese Walsh so uh, you know got a bit of a, a, a hero's uh, reception after getting sent last night <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, the, the guy's only got fine. So he is playing this week. Um, similar to Munster, you know, obviously playing or not playing for Queensland, he wouldn't be playing around 19. Uh, the Broncos do have one other buy as well in the back end of the season. I don't remember which week exactly, but uh, that is something to keep in mind. You know, if you're trying to weigh up between 
couple of options, you know, maybe that extra buy might be the, the difference. Uh, Joey Manu coming into, uh, I wouldn't say he's a trade-in. He's moved back to the centres, which is his worst scoring position. I think the appeal of Manu when we traded him in was that he was getting named at 5'8", and he had dipped in price. So you can see uh, he's still down 230000 on his starting price last year, um, and that's because he's played a lot of games in, in the centres. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, he did score big last week, but that was at fullback. Tedesco will be back. Um, so, and yeah, so I, I wouldn't recommend trading Manu. I mean, if you've got him, you can hold him. He will make a bit of cash before round 19. But I definitely think that's the time to, to uh, you know, cut him loose. Because he's probably just outside of the, the premium sort of center wing options when he is playing at center. Uh, Kalen Ponga. So, you know, since he's moved back to fullback, he's scoring great. Um, and, you know, he can he can fill in the fullback. He can play at 5'8 in your side, whichever sort of spot you need filling. There's lots of 5'8 trade-ins, but I don't know. I guess Dylan Brown would be the trade-out, but he wasn't in the list, was he? <laughs> I don't know. I must have missed something when I looked at the trade-outs. Um but yeah, because you've got Cody Walker as well, again, and gun option. The one concern with Cody Walker, I suppose, is given, you know, they haven't done much in the first two games, is there going to be a shake-up in the New South Wales side? You know, we were, we were, I guess it's a, yeah, we were debating on the way home with some, some other um, fans. Admittedly, we were all Queenslanders, but I guess from our point of view, uh, you know, looking at the New South Wales side, we couldn't see why they are, uh, you know, focused on the the Penrith combination when, you know, you've got the South combination that was sort of there in a sense with uh, Hook. I know he had to fill in for Turbo in the centres, but Cam Murray sort of just playing limited minutes off the bench when he's a, you know, a big minute uh, a lock. Uh, Cody Walker, you know, pretty interchangeable for Jerome Luai. Um, you know, they could have brought in Adam Reynolds instead of Mitchell Moses to, to bring in that extra South, a bit of combo. Obviously, Latrell missing with injury would have, you know, if he was in, that would have made the South sort of link even stronger. Um, and, you know, that's essentially your, your whole sort of spine of the team there. So, um, yeah, you know, they might decide to go that way in game three. But, again, that's just a couple of... Um, yeah, intoxicated Queenslanders' <laughs> opinion on it. So <laughs> take that for what you will. Uh, Harry Grant, at number nine, you know, is very much the same as Cam Munster, so I won't worry too much about that. And Campbell Graham, so I guess, you know, I just talked about the sales combination. Does maybe Campbell Graham get a look in in game three? You know, he was originally picked for game one and then pulled out with injury and they sort of went all in on the, the Penrith combos and... And I guess with Turbo out, there is definitely a spot available. Um, obviously, the trail's still got to come back in and all that sort of stuff. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there, there might be a spot for Graham. So, you know, if you wanted to bring him in, you could. If you wanted to wait and see till round 19, that's probably fine too. Uh, but in terms of the uh, captaincy options for this week, let's have a look. At, we'll just go to the top 10% as usual because they're the ones that are usually a bit more switched on about it. <laughs> so with the vice-captaincy, you can see uh, Caelan Ponga is a very popular choice. Um, against Penrith this week, I probably wouldn't have lent that way. Um, but, yeah, I guess, you know, I can see the, the upside in it, and, um, yeah, it, it might be worth a shout. Clint Gutherson, popular, I guess, you know, he has been scoring well lately, so ride the wave and and cash in on a on a double point uh, VC, perhaps. Sean Johnson, you know, against the Dragons, who a little bit of drama around Ben Hunt wanting to, to go and that sort of thing. So, you know, could be... Um, yeah, you know, I think it's a really good option. Um, Ruben Garrick... So, a bit surprising. Maybe this is a holdover from last week. You know, but playing against Melbourne and, you know, even with Turbo out, 
he was still named in the centres. K.O. Weeks has been named at fullback this week. Um, and probably you'd imagine the way they've structured their side, he'll, he'll be there for the, the foreseeable future. Um, Joey Money. So, yeah, again, might be another sort of holdover, but from playing fullback last week. Uh, but playing Canberra, you know, could, could be a, a decent pod sort of shout. Mitchell Moses, you know, I guess he he'll be, he should be back this week. Um, was okay last night. Probably just it wasn't helped by the fact that uh, the the New South Wales side in general didn't look like they were throwing much in attack. Whether that's from him the way he directed it, or whether it was Turbo's injury, or whether it was a bit of everything. <laughs> um, yeah, Queensland's defence was amazing, so that was obviously a factor too. Uh, and then Cody Walker, 33.3%. Th- um, 3. 3%, so we're starting to get in a bit of pod territory here. Charles Nicol Clockstar, that's an interesting shout. You know, he has been scoring well lately. Nick Meaney, goal-kicking fullback. They're always in the conversation. And Sarko, you know, leading... He'd be up there around the leading point scorer for the year, so, yeah, that's fair. Cam Munster's always in there, thereabouts. Jermaine Hopgood. And then, you know, getting into the real sort of pot options. A few people haven't changed those yet from Buller. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, and then the captaincy. So Mitchell Moses at the top of the list. Um, so, yep, I think, you know, it might be like people going something. I was going to say Sean Johnson into Moses, but they're both halfbacks. So that wouldn't work. Because <laughs> I think Parramatta's pretty early in the round too. I can't see it on here. Um, but yeah, you know, I guess if you, if you wanted to go the straight captaincy option, I don't think that's the worst shout in the world. Cody Walker, so, you know, I don't mind this either if you've got him. So, you know, I guess he's, he's owned by 53% in the top 10%, uh, and then 13% captain. So I guess, you know, what this is sort of suggesting is that a third of the people who have him or thereabouts, maybe a little bit less. Uh, maybe a quarter. Yeah, I was being a bit generous. Uh, a people, a quarter of the people who got him are uh, backing him in as captain, and I think that makes sense. Nico Hines. Obviously, a lot of people haven't uh, updated their trades yet. Uh, mine might be included in this starter. Although, just looking at it, it's his uh, his grayed out. Oh no, no, I remember what I did. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, Sean Johnson at ten percent. You know, straight C in the first game. It's not the worst option. You know, obviously with all the buys and stuff, there's always a nice chance of using the loophole. But uh, there is definitely uh, an advantage sometimes in in just taking the captaincy and and not having to to stress about it. Clint Gutherson, you know, he is a popular VC option. Sort of makes sense that he's a popular C. Jerome Hughes, you know, I guess Manly without Turbo, is always a good opportunity to, to capitalise. So uh, you've got him and Munster. There you go. They're both around the same sort of uh, captaincy. Jerome Hughes has slightly less ownership, though, so the relative percentage is higher. Reese Walsh, so against the Titans. You know, Titans haven't been uh, setting their world on fire defensively. So an attacking player like Reese Walsh could be a really great option. Uh, and then I guess getting into some more pod type options. Big, I got big ten. I was captain. What's happened there? <laughs> yeah, what's well, not the worst yet? He, he's uh, he's uh, pretty consistently scoring there in the front row at the moment. But uh, Garrick Ponga, Haas, yeah, okay, yep, they're fine. It's sort of particularly like you know ten and Haas are safe captain the options. You know they back up from Origin and they still just churn out the same work rate. So. That's fine. Joey Tarpany is an interesting one there at 1.8%. <laughs> I guess playing in the last game, maybe, you know, that's the in case of emergency captain sort of situation. So you can VC someone a bit later in the round and have two cracks at it that way. All right. So in terms of how all of this information impacts my team, <laughs> Yeah, so I think what I did here is I'd already moved the players around from where they started last week in terms of their 
their, uh, you know, where they would line up this week. And so the the two trades that we were were always going to do was Cleary and oh, not Tarpany. Sorry, having some dramas here. It's going to break out Tarpany, isn't it? It's just gone complete slow down here. <laughs> this is not what we want to see. Cancel you. Yeah, so, I guess the two initial trades were Cleary and PT out. And Sean Johnson is in. That's still happening. Uh, I'm pretty sure in the preview I did have Jermaine Hopgood, though. But I guess if we're going to go down the, the pod route... Uh, it'd be a fair way down the list, won't he? Going to look at Kuala Matangi. So, yeah, I would guess try to do something a bit different. Uh, Zig win, win other Zag. Uh, and then the third trade, I think, has been made quite easier by the, the injury to Tommy Turbo. And, and then, you know, the question is, which gun full whack do we want? But what I'm thinking we do, even though we, we don't particularly need the cash, <laughs> um, but I think it's a bit more of just a bit of a holding pattern because I don't know the answer just yet. But I'm going to swing Ponga back and actually bring in KO Week. So a like for like replacement for Turbo. As you can see, it means I've got about a million dollars sitting on the pine and... Um, as I've talked about, going on holidays for two weeks, so it could very well be sitting there for <laughs> two weeks, uh, which isn't ideal, but I guess when we look at the side after the trades are made, after the trades are made, <laughs> so yeah, so doing that, means that we've got well 16 for the week you can see we've still got Fainu at at 17 in the hope he does find his way on the bench or something but uh this is this is the best we can do with this the side we've got you know we've got Lemuelu who's now been shifted back to the bench so it would have been nice to trade him out um just has peaked in price so you know I think we can easily turn this, these two picks into, you know, two more guns. Um, you know, again, who that is, I, I need to spend a little bit more time thinking about. Obviously, Pong will shift back here. So, Schuster will become my other fullback. Um, and, yeah, I just haven't really made a decision on that. <laughs> um, and then, Lemuelu. I guess we don't have the, the swing anymore. But when you look, like, our, our forward pack is pretty stacked. Um, it should be next week, I think, that uh, Edwards and, and me... I think Finey's played enough to get second row um, status as well. So, you know, I'll have these guys swing in with Tohu and, and Tarpany, you know. So the, the forward pack's pretty well set. You know, the halves, we've got... On Johnson to flip back. Um, yeah, it'll just be, I guess, probably post Origin 3. Um, K O Weeks could then easily go back to, to Matt Burton, I think, is I'm going to go with Ponga and Burton, the pod 5.8s for the run home. Um, and then, yeah, you know, I guess it's just the, the, the wing, center wing and fullback because, you know, there's so many great options. Uh, and there's, you know, there's so many. You know, they go up and down. There is quite a bit of variability, so it is difficult to predict. Um, but yeah, you know, it'll just be whenever the sort of the right one presents itself that we can get on. Right, but yeah, that's how the, the team's going to sit for this week. Um, in terms of captaincy, vice captaincy, I, I don't know why I put it on these guys, to be honest. Um <laughs> They're both weapons, but uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to go... Basically, we're just going to go straight C on Sean Johnson. 
Um, mostly because I'll be spending most of the weekend in the air, so I won't have access to the internet anyway to, to really check and chop and change. Um, and then the VC. I, initially, I was going to go with Jermaine Hopgood, but now I've gone with the uh, the pot option in Chloe Matangi. Um, so, you know, it, it's just... And it really is just a ceremonial type position at this point because I'm not going to use the loophole unless obviously SJ's out. Um, so yeah, so for that reason, we might just go with uh, no, I don't want to go with Nick Clock Sad. Ah. No way. You know what? Let's just leave it on Dave for feeder. <laughs> Yeah, there's no point mucking around with it. Like I said, I'm really not going to use the loophole. Pretty sure SJ will, will play on Friday night. So, yeah. So, I guess, you know, that's how the team sits. What do we got left? 11 trades. And as I said, you know, we probably want to upgrade Schuster and Lemuelu. So, Alamotti survives the cut yet again. <laughs> uh, then eventually, you know, we can we can upgrade weeks. Um and then, you know, we've probably still got money left where we could even, you know, upgrade these guys and just have, or, you know, maybe even the, uh, another front roll, maybe, and just almost have full premium set up. That would be insane. Um, but, yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's where it's all at. So we'll wrap it up. So we'll wrap the video up there. Uh, if you've got any other thoughts or suggestions on, on what you'd do differently, uh, please uh, feel free to comment. Uh, if you enjoy the content, remember like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, in saying that, you know, if you do subscribe, there won't be a great deal of content over the next couple of weeks. I will do the the round reviews each week, um, but they will be very quick and just done off of my phone. Um, and that, that's even assuming I can get the you know decent internet or mobile reception over there. Um, and yeah, so other than that, thanks very much as always for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.